Hey guys, welcome back. It is vlog number four. So I'm feeling good. I got my green tea. I had a banana. I went for a run. I feel pretty decent. Um, and today I'm sitting in the studio and I'm editing show number, I believe it's 213. And there was a topic in on this show that I kind of wanted to get into a little bit deeper. And what it was, was Nikon came up with a method of autofocus lens calibration, but built into the camera that you can just simply hit one button. Basically, it does it automatically for you. You don't have to do anything, or so they say, right? So before I get into it deeper um, and look at this D5 as well as the D500 that allow you to do it, let me show you exactly what is phase detection in comparison to contrast detection when it comes to autofocus. So let's take a look at it. Let me move this mic out of the way and the keyboard and let's grab some paper and draw some pretty pictures. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at autofocus contrast detection. So let's first draw a lens here and we'll draw the sensor over here. All right, so this would be your lens and this would be your sensor. Now. In an ideal situation, being that your camera body and your lens are perfectly married together and matched, the light would come through and strike the sensor perfect on that focal plane, right here. This is perfect. Now, your next lens, we're gonna use red for example, okay? The light comes through and it goes something like this. Now you can see it's actually striking right about here. This is where the light is being focused. What this means is this right here, this combination of lens and body would end up producing front focus. So what is front focus? So real world situation, front focus would basically be like this. This is your model. You're taking a picture of your model and you've focused in on her eyes. If you have a front focusing situation with your lens and body combination, you will think that you're getting her eyes tack sharp. Where in, in reality, when you go and take a look in post-production, what will happen is her nose would actually be tack sharp, the tip of her nose instead of her eyes. Now, let's take a look at it differently. I'm gonna use a blue marker this time. Now the light with the blue marker, which would be a different lens, would come through like this. And as you can see, it's actually striking back here. This right here is the equivalent to back focus. Now once again, in real world situation, if we have the same model, instead of her eyes being in focus, well, maybe the tip of her ears would be in focus instead. Another situation is, let's say you're in a church and it's extremely dim. What happens is you can hear the, the lens do what? You can hear that zzz, 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 zzz. Well, that's exactly what contrast detection does. What happens is it doesn't really know where the focal point is. And what it does is it goes past it and then before it, and then it halves it again. And it goes past it and before it and past it and for it and back, back and forth until it finds that exact focal plane or the focal plane that it thinks it should be. That's how it works. Thus, contrast detection is slightly slower than phase detection. Let's take a look at phase detection and how, how it kind of differs a little bit. Phase detection autofocus, okay? Now, if you take a look at my hands here, if they come together like this, right? As you can see, they are out of phase. This right here would be out of focus. If we move them slightly this way, they're also out of phase, but now past the point. If we move them a little bit back and they come together, this is a perfectly in focus image. Now, let's look at it a little bit different. Let's say you have two different beams of light. Let's have a blue, let's say sine wave, and we have a red, sine wave, and they look like this. The way, the way phase detection works is they want these to come together to form one perfect sine wave. This right here would be perfectly in focus. This would be out of focus. So I hope that helped just a little bit understanding the difference between phase and contrast. 
um, autofocus detection. Now, back to the idea of Nikon and this magic button. Does it work? So for me, I've seen it work and not work. It's, I've seen it do, you know, come back with negative 15 and then all of a sudden come back with negative 10 and then do it again and I have negative 12 and then I have negative 11. It almost seems that that color and the amount of light and there's a lot of other possible, let's say variables that are causing it not to be exact. So is it 100%? I would say no, but they're getting there and at least they're giving us the functionality to be able to do a really quick way to get autofocus lens calibration done maybe easy or easier. I like the whole idea of just one button and just getting it done. You still need to have some type of focus. So just to focus on a rock is really not going to work. The easiest way is to get maybe, let's say, a focus pyramid like what I created or any other autofocus lens calibration tool. Set it up in your studio and get that focus right. Calibrate all your lenses. So this way, when you leave to go do a shoot, you know that exactly what you focus on is exactly what's going to be sharp and in focus. Now, we know that Canon has both telephoto and wide angle in their autofocus lens calibration system. I don't think Nikon does. If they do, I apologize. But if they don't, they really need to. What does that mean? That means that when I'm shooting my 70 to 200, for example, with one of my older bodies, I have to just pick a spot. I have to pick right around, for me, it would be 180 millimeters because I use it for portraits, right? Now, with a newer Canon body, I can set both wide and telephoto. So that means at 70 millimeters and also at 200 millimeters, I can set my autofocus calibration. So the lens is perfectly sharp at 70 and is also perfectly sharp at 200. I hope Nikon gets this and ends up putting it into all of their camera bodies. Now, so I guess my question to you guys are, do you have a D5? Do you have a D500? Do you use it? Have you tried the magic button? Does it work for you? How well does it work for you? Also, if you have a Nikon, if they were able to put this functionality into your camera, let's say just simply by a firmware update, would you use it? Do you like it? Uh, personally, I think it's pretty cool. You know, what do you guys think about the whole situation? You know, I want to hear basically from you. So especially from my Nikon crew that's out there. I know there's a lot of Nikon. I'm a, I'm a Canon shooter, but for me, I don't really care what it is. When I'm doing a, a photo shoot, if I'm shooting models, half the time I'm, you know, bringing in Hasselblads. It really doesn't make a difference. I shoot everything. I shoot film sometimes when I'm doing my artwork. So um, anyways, what do you guys have to say? That's what I want to know. So questions, comments, anything, go ahead and put them below here in YouTube. If you're listening, you can find me on YouTube by searching for J. Christina Photo. That's J. Christina Photo, Christina with no H. You can also follow me on Instagram at Joseph Christina, on Twitter also at Joseph Christina. Once again, no H in Christina. Follow me there and please subscribe. Subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up if you like the content. So that's it, guys. We'll see you in the next video.